national situation where um, local police departments, uh, sheriff's departments, have a chance to connect with with all of us. Uh, and you know, so for me, for instance, it's connecting with a, a policeman or a sheriff's deputy when they're not outside my door or my car. Okay, <laughs> say hi, officer. Okay. Um, this is a chance just to kind of rub elbows and, and uh, just say hello as well. So um, just come and stop by if you could. It's sponsored by the Sheriff's Department and the New Kent uh, Parks and Recreation as well. The the Bible study, The Chosen, started last week. Um, it, it's running every other week. I think there's like 14 people involved, which is an awesome thing. The location is going to be moved to here because Tuesday evenings are, are free. Um, this is a, will be a better location for it. So here is where that location will be. Um, any announcements that you might have today? <coughs> Pray for our capital campaign as it takes shape. Um, we are we have a, a few slots to fill. Um, you will be getting phone calls uh, over the course of time. But uh, we thank the Lord for the folks who are who are stepping up and and helping and uh, uh, volunteering to be a part of that leadership team. That's a real blessing for us. Ruth, I saw your hand. Well, Children's Church, we're going to stay in here, and I'm just going to move the kids up closer to the screen Please. so we can watch Peter's. Good deal. Presentation. Good deal. Right, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today. We thank you for the great blessing of being called together as your people. And so, Lord, be with us now as we come together. Um, come to us in your word as you promise, Lord. Meet us as we go through our life today. Uh, meet us, Lord, with your word, both in scripture and in testimony. Uh, fill us, Lord, as we get equipped once again to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace, and then we continue to our first hymn.
gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We come before the Lord as sinners who are in need of repentance and forgiveness. In his gracious love, God sent his Son, Jesus, into the world to be our Savior and our Redeemer. And let us consider our own unworthiness for such a great gift and confess our sins before God and one another, together as his people. Let us look to Christ, who fulfilled the law for us and takes away its condemnation by his death on the cross and resurrection from the grave. We take refuge in God's infinite grace and mercy toward us, his children. confident in God's grace. Let us confess our sins to God, our loving Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in our word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Son Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news today for you. Christ Jesus was born to lead us out of darkness and to save us. In him we have new life. By his death and resurrection, we have been set free from sin, from death, and from the power of the evil one. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore announce to you that our sins are forgiven, every one of them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to, God. to God. We sing together, come, now is the time to worship. evil paths. By your Spirit, turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
Ruth, would you like to come up for a moment? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? How's school going, everybody? Good. Yeah? Brooklyn, Grady, Jordan, going good? We start Monday. Oh, you just start Monday. You've had an extended break. Nice, Jordan. Well, she was in school July 1. She was? She was in school through July. Oh, okay. So <coughs> she's got a late start on summer. Okay. All right. I get it. Nice. Well, so I thought we'd look at the second reading because it, it gives us a, another little challenge this week. Most weeks I give you a little challenge. This one's the, you know, not to, not to sway from that. It says, first of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. And then God, and then God kinds of gives us an idea who those all people are. For kings and all who are in high positions. Think about that for a minute. That we may lead a peaceful and quiet, godly and and dignified, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So, he's taught what is that supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings made for all people. What is that talking about there? Jordan? Brooklyn, Grady, what do you think? What supplications, prayers, intercessions? What is, what is that? Well, he, gives, he tells us in the second word. Prayers, right? It's all kinds of prayers. To intercede means to, to pray on someone's behalf when they've got a problem. Thanksgiving is to pray and say thank you, God, right? Supplication is to ask about something and, and prayer. And, and then he says, for kings and all who are in high positions. Now, who's in high positions above you guys? Who, who has high positions over you guys in your life? Oh, point to dad. Yeah, Jordan? Your parents? Yeah. Not mom? Just dad? Oh, no? I think she'd differ with you. Uh, your parents? But who else in your life have a higher position than you? What do you think, Grady? Teachers and principals. <laughs> Teachers and principals, right? Jordan? The Lord. The Lord, yeah. But pretty much, like, pretty much everybody else in your life, <laughs> except for maybe just your friends, right? And if you're on a sports team, some of your friends could be in a higher position than you, right? Because they could be the captain of the team if you're not. So there's lots of people that are in higher positions than you are. And the Lord is saying... To pray for them. Have you ever thought to pray for those people in your lives? To pray for your teachers? To pray for your principal? How about praying for the governor of our of our state? You don't even know who probably your state senator is. I don't either, frankly. Tommy Norman. Tommy Norman. There we go. Okay. Um, and we have people that that go to, to go to uh, D.C. and represent us. The President of the United States. All those people are in high positions above us. Jordan's dad deals with a lot of them all the time. Right? Right, Jordan? Yeah. He's a businessman. Yeah. Well, he, deals with, he deals with the judges. The judges in our state, in our country, and they have high positions above us. Yeah. And many times we think, oh, I don't think I like those guys. How about... How about the, the, the sheriffs, the county sheriffs and the state troopers? They're in high positions above us, and many times we don't think we like that much either. <laughs> right? But here the Lord is saying to pray for them. Why do you suppose? Why would he want us to pray for them? Because we deal with crap every day. <laughs> <laughs> because they deal with mm, hard stuff every day. Yeah, It's not easy deal with the public every day, is it? No, they have hard jobs. And they need wisdom. And they need wisdom. Yeah. They need to do their job with wisdom and love. 
to be dignified in everything that they do. Sometimes what we see on TV isn't so dignified. Yeah. To be godly in everything that they do and make godly decisions. They need our prayers. And so the Lord is saying to us, pray for them all the time. In thanksgiving, intercession, supplication, all kinds of prayers for all of those people. So you got a challenge again this week. Pray for all the people who have charge over you. Starting with your parents. Because they've got a hard job too. A really hard job. It's really hard to be a parent. It really is. And all those other people who have jobs who are above us and are making decisions that affect our lives every day. So let's remember to pray for them because that's what the Lord is telling us to do in 1 Timothy 2. To pray for them. That's your challenge. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Now kids, if you'd like to come up and sit in the row, I guess, is this row empty so it doesn't block? So maybe sit right here if you want to, if you can't see that screen better. If you need to see, sit, move up a little bit, okay? All right. Thanks, Ruth. Thank you so much. We continue with our responsive reading today, found on page three. So together we begin. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and infants. You have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and of the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second lesson is 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 7. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men. The man is Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you so much. We rise for the Alleluia. morning from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. We're going to sing the next song, but the first stanza and the last stanza. Christian love, yes, you can. <laughs> so, uh, just a couple of things as we as we take a look at the gospel lesson for today. You know, um, I I am just always amazed by this text that says that we, in the midst of our lives, we go and we make disciples of all nations. And the real way of thinking about that go is not like, okay, let's get out of here now and go make disciples. You know, we're going to do it for the next hour and a half, and then we'll come back. Uh, it's, it's not really what the Greek intends. The Greek words that form that sentence have more of a, as you are going about your life, make disciples of all nations. And that speaks something totally different, right? It's our witness. It's our proclamation. It's how we share God's love and God's word. That's important. Today we have an opportunity to have uh, our son Peter Missionary Peter McReynolds, who's here, it's, it's tough getting a, a guy named McReynolds to also speak at the same <laughs> yeah. church. You know, there's not a whole lot of McReynolds Lutherans around. You know, yeah. but uh, but um, Peter has you know been symbolic of that. He's he's gone to a faraway place, but while he was there, this all started even before when he was here. As he was going, God was using him and forming him. And, and making him into the person he was calling him to be. And, and now, as he's in a different location, um, it's as he is going and as he is sharing. And he's going to share a little bit about what the Lord has been doing in his life the past year today. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to move this really quickly over here so I can see the screen as well. All right. We're good, Dave. Yep. I'm in the line of fire. Okay, sweet. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Buenos dias a todos. Um, Buenos dias. Buenos dias. So that means good morning, everyone. Um, it's so great to be here with you all. Um, before I start with anything, I just want to say a quick prayer. So, uh, dear Holy Father, um, Lord, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this beautiful morning and this chance to um, share the experiences that you've given me. And um, Lord, I pray. Um, in this moment, will you calm my nerves? Will you give me um, words to say and, um, and confidence to say them? And uh, Lord, we just thank you for this gift of life and this gift of this time to share with one another. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. 
All right, so, um, yep, I'm Peter. Um, I know I know many of you, and I'm so grateful that many of you know me pretty well as well, but I know there are some that, that don't as, as well, and some online maybe um, that might not know me too well. So I'll just give you a little bit of background of my life before we, we get into things. So um, I'm 26. I uh, graduated from VCU um, a couple years ago with, from an exercise science degree, and um, in my time at VCU, I was able to um, spend it in, uh, most of my time in a campus ministry called Crew. And I remember being up here last year, kind of sharing a little bit about that, um, a little bit more as well, um, of right now, of just um, the impact that had on me when I was a student, um, just being able to be a part of a campus ministry, um, really being a part of a, a community of Christians on campus that's really hard to find and hard to be a part of um, on most universities. Um, here in the States and then as I've learned uh, throughout the whole world as well. Um, so um, that was such a great experience for me, um, being discipled by someone, being able to be in the Word with other Christians on campus, um, such a great experience and they have um, opportunities for uh, recently graduated students to go overseas and um, go to a country of their choosing. Um, you know, Crew, I think, has the tagline of, like, we're, we're in more countries than McDonald's is. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, so, so many to choose from, and I had kind of just, like, an overwhelming abundance of choices, and I was just like, Lord, I know I want to go. I know you've given me this will and this opportunity, this space of time to be able to go, uh, but I, I just don't know where. So, I took that as, oh, I still need to apply, I still need to do all the things. So. I did, and they came back to me with Ecuador. So, um, you know, here I am with three years of Spanish speaking experience in high school. That was like eight years ago at the time, and I was just like, okay, well, let's just let's do this. Let's do this. So here I am now, standing, uh, having spent a year in Ecuador, and um, yeah, um, I would love to um, show a couple more pictures here. Um, so that's me, for the first week um, in in Quito in the city of the capital city of, of Quito in Ecuador and um, it's really high in elevation and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the city later but um, even though I have a smile on my face I was still getting adjusted to the altitude so I was very very exhausted and tired um, and then the next picture is my family so this was when we all spent a week together up in the Adirondack Mountains of New York and um, yeah it was a great time um, had a great time w spending uh, the full week with my um, nieces and nephew down there, Declan, Rory, and Vivian, and the rest of the family. You see we all have matching shirts. It was called the McReynolds Fest 2022. So uh, my dad made those. Um, and uh, I told him if, if, if we're going to do Mc McReynolds Fest and put a 22 at the end, that means it has to be annual. So we have to have another one next year. So that's, we're, hopefully next year at this time I'll be sharing another thing with different shirts on with 23. So that's a little bit about that. The next picture is my team um, that I went to Ecuador with. Um, and from the left to the right, we have Graham. He's from Idaho. And Kate is from Michigan. And that's me in the center there. And we have um, Peyton from Raleigh, North Carolina. And then Caleb from Chicago. And these, yeah, these, these guys are my team for the whole year. And um, we actually only met in person the day that we were traveling to Ecuador. So we, we didn't, we had no knowledge of, of anyone, of each other, um, except just a couple Zoom calls before that. So we met on, like, on the plane um, going there. And it was a little bit nerve wracking. You know, I had, I had this sense of like, man, I'm really going into this just eyes closed with a lot of things. And that was the first reality of that. Um, and, you know, um, I'm really grateful that the Lord um, quickly turned us from strangers to family members. You know, we would we would spend all, pretty much all day with each other, whether that was in a work environment with ministry, or we would we also all lived in the same apartment together. So that was a great time of fellowship with one another. Um, and yeah, there are people that I miss dearly right now. Um, but I'm so grateful to say that I have now brothers and sisters all across. Um, the nation, and some are even uh, back in Ecuador right now, and uh, being able to continue to live life with them even at a distance is, is great. Um, so, getting into um, a little bit of Quito, 
if we'll, okay, actually pausing here. So if everyone will keep these verses in mind, these, um, these Bible passages. So um, quick story about Romans 10. I, I did this presentation at a, at a church, um, a Lutheran church, uh, Chesapeake Community of Hope down in Chesapeake. That was my first presentation and I was procrastinating a bit with giving them the slides. Um, so I walked in that Sunday morning um, not having given them the slides yet, and they they were running through the order of events of their their service, and they had this Romans 10 text up already before I had even given them this. Um, so that was just an awesome display of, of just what the Lord can do, and I I always like to share that one. So um, just keep these two in mind. I'll come back to them at the end here, um, and I before I get into Quito, um, just kind of what I'll be talking about. Um, today, um, you know, it was a it was a whole year. There was a lot to share. Uh, I could spend the whole day talking to you guys about different stories and different things. Um, I want to give you a good picture through um, kind of my mindset before going, and then while I was there, and then now after what I've learned from all of that. So my expectations, the realities, and then and then what I've learned. Um, so. Um, this is this is Quito here. Um, it's a population of about five or six million people in the city. Um, and what you're looking at with this picture um, is probably about 25% of, of the city itself. And if we go to the next one, um, then right behind those trees, you can you can see. Hopefully, there's no glare. Um, with their, the city kind of just spans all to the left and to the right of that whole picture and you still can't even see it the whole thing from there um, so that the city is is up in the andes mountains it's at about nine thousand feet of elevation and it's it's situated in a valley so there's mountains on both sides and it can't you can't grow it to get wider it has to just keep getting longer and longer so where it is right now if you were to be at the very north end of the city and driving all the way to the south end without traffic it would take you about two hours um, so it's very, very large. Um, and this where we're standing right here um, is about 12,000, 13,000 feet or so. And the next picture, um, so one of my hobbies is uh, I love uh, taking pictures um, just, of, just of God's creation. I love just like looking at a beautiful landscape and saying, wow, God created that. Let me just pull up my phone really quick, you know? Um, so I'll have a couple of these in there as well. I uh, hope this gives you a kind of a good glimpse of... Um, just the environment there and the and the and the, the landscape and the natural beauty that, that God has created there in Ecuador. So um, yeah, if we go to the next one. Um, okay, so pausing here. So the mission uh, in going to, to Ecuador for our team was to go and, and to create campus um, or Christian communities on each campus. And like I said, uh, Quito is a very large city um, with the five or six million people. There's about 17 universities there. Um, and we really worked in the five or six main ones. Um, and in those five or six main universities, we came and we met the three student leaders that they had um, at the time. So only three student leaders, and there were, weren't really many other um, staff members to help them. So they were, you know, they were working very, very hard. And I, I could just see the relief on their faces, our first meeting in person, um, just to be able to have uh, a couple extra hands, a couple extra people to be able to help them. And this picture is now flash forwarding to this past June. Um, we, we, had, um, we ended up with, with 14 student leaders um, throughout the, the whole uh, universities. And um, this was our going away party, our despedida, what they call them. And, um, that's, that's a picture of, of us five of the team that came to Ecuador, but then it's also um, all, all of the student leaders, and all of them, I'm grateful to say, are also considered family to me, and all of them are really, really great friends of mine. Um, and on the bottom there, we have my boss, um, El Jefe, uh, Javi, and his, and his beautiful family down there as well. Um, so getting into my expectations, um, you know, I talked about being in crew and in um, at VCU and being a student there. I was also a student leader, um, so that was my whole perspective of what crew looks like in a miss mission setting. Um, and and I thought, you know, having the one campus, you know, I know this deal, I know how this works. 
Seems pretty simple, I know, you know, I've, I've been a part of this, I've been even a student leader, so this is gonna be easy. I'm gonna go over to Ecuador, make a couple friends, you know, and it'll, it'll be a, a breeze. Um, and uh, another one, another one of my expectations, you know, I've heard um, a lot about um, just being immersed in the culture and the language, and even though I didn't go with any real Spanish experience, my expectation was that at the third month, at most, uh, I would be fluent in Spanish, and um, you know, so that was that was another one, and then um, another one would be that I would only be um, on mission for the one year, and that's it, and then I would come back here and kind of continue with my regular life. Um, finally, I, I also um, kind of just thinking through my expectations and my perception of things before, um, you know, going to a, 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 a different country. For a, for a mission trip um, for that period of time and going to a third world country, my expectation was that I would be um, evangelizing every single day. I would be um, able to be a part of um, witnessing to so many people and witnessing them come to Christ. And, and, and the numbers would be in the tens of hundreds. And I would be you know able to be a part of that. And that would have been great. Um, so the next picture. So, um, so, uh, all of those expectations quickly turned out to not be true. You know? um, and, and first of all, being um, this guy is Josue, and um, I'm kind of talking now about, about this, that last expectation I had of, of tens of hundreds of people, right? Um, so Josue is a guy that I met um, the, the first month of being there, and he had already been a part of crew. He had already um, come to Christ, and he, he was already... Um, yeah, so passionate about the Lord, and and um, in meeting Josue, um, I learned that, that you know I'm actually not called here to 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 um, bring Jesus to to hundreds of people. Right? He's already here. You know, he didn't come with me. He's already here, um, and I'm I'm here to help grow the relationship that's already been built with so many people. Um, and a quick story about Josue. Um, I had. I had known that I was going to be discipling him, that I was going to be meeting with him weekly before actually meeting him in person. Um, so that first meeting we had in September, we met at a coffee shop, and there was some pressure there for, in my mind of like, well, I'm, I'm going to be this. I have this this first meeting has, has to be a good impression and all these things. It has to go well. Um, but but the Lord quickly relieved a lot of that um, stress just right in meeting him because he's a great guy. He he loves to laugh, loves to smile. And, and we, all, um, we, you know, we shared a little bit about our lives in that first meeting. We shared our testimonies. And um, he went first in sharing his. And every single thing that he said, um, I would just think, like, like huh, interesting. That's, that makes sense. Okay, that sounds familiar. Okay, so you've, you've learned that, too. You've, you've been through that, too. Okay, wow. And, and I kid you not, every single thing that he shared with me about his testimony, about his walk up to this point with the Lord, aligned almost the same exact to my testimony. And, um, and I, at the end of it, I was like, I, was, I said, Josue, thank you for, for sharing. You know, I can share mine too now to you, but I feel like I just heard it from you, you know, and um, it was just amazing. And, and we kind of just sat there and just like marveled and how crazy that is and how amazing it is that, that two guys living their lives um, thousands of miles apart um, would have this experience and, and, and go through this similar walk that the Lord has been taking them through um, throughout their lives. And, and he's 26 as well. He just graduated. Um, and what that, what that showed me um, is that, yeah, my expectation to, um, to be a part of such a huge movement with hundreds of people, um, that was really just that was really a little bit of, of me um, hoping to fuel my pride a little bit. You know, and 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 having this was was a great um, lesson in humility, but that also lesson in that God, it, it's His plan over mine. It's always His plan over mine, and that He is He's the God of of, of everything. You know, um, and these things kept happening with Josue. I would come to him throughout the year, and I would be like, Hey, man, you know, I'm going through this, or vice versa. He would come to me, and then it would always be like, Well, I I went through that like two weeks ago, and here's what I learned. You know, and uh, you know he's he's one of my best friends. It's it's not because not just because of that, but it's also because he's just a great guy. Uh, so yeah. So then the next picture 
So this one's talking about uh, my expectation of being fluent in Spanish. <laughs> and um, so, um, like I said, I was hoping for the third month at the most, right? And I'm not fluent yet. I'm not even fluent <laughs> standing up here right now. So um, that, you know, that hopefully that says a little something. Um, this picture is showing um, we went on a, a little mission trip down in the south of Quito. We um, did some street evangelism and invited people in to come watch a movie about Jesus. Um, it was actually the Passion of the Christ. We, it was over Holy Week. We said, you know, we went out and we said, hey guys, like we're showing this movie later tonight. We'd love for you to come join us. Bring your family, bring your friends. And we had a lot of people that, um, that wanted to come. So um, that room, I, I would say, had about 100, 100 plus people, um, which was really awesome. And during watching the movie, one of my leaders who was sitting just on the same row, a little bit farther away from me, he comes up and kind of kneels in front of me and, and says, hey, so we're doing this presentation right after the, after the movie, and, and we, we need you to, to invite everyone, um, all the students, all, uh, you know, if, if there's parents, tell them to invite their students to this conference that we're gonna be having in a couple weeks for all of our students. Um, and uh, he was like, you can do that, right? Okay, cool. And I'm just like, in my mind, I'm just thinking none of these people know English. No one speaks a bit of English. This is all going to have to be in Spanish. And this is also like a very intense scene at the moment too. So I just like can't focus at all. And he just right away, he's like, okay, you got it, cool. And then he just goes back to the seat. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm just like, all right, like, I guess I'm doing this. And uh, yeah, I say a quick prayer. I say, Lord, you know, just like speak through me. Lord, I, I know I don't have the words, but I know you do. And um, Lord, please speak through me. And um, yeah, if if the Holy Spirit isn't the same Holy Spirit in Acts um, that we learn about, um, you know, if God isn't the same God that we read about every single um, every single Sunday, every single day, uh, He He spoke through me um, in that moment, and I, I knew the words, I knew what I was saying, and I knew what I was trying to get across to people, but I had no idea how how it was coming out. You know, it, it was one of those moments that I hear about. Um, stories of people that like, the, like, like speaking in, in different languages just right off the bat and I always hear those stories and I'm just like yeah well that's cool you know that's never gonna happen to me you know like that's that's there's no way um, but this was an experience that that did and uh, it's it's amazing to be able to say that and to share that with you guys today so um, yeah the next one is going off of the expectation that um, everything would just be a breeze everything would be easy you know uh, again I came in with the expectation that uh, I know this whole deal with with crew and I, I, I can just come in here and, and just run the show type thing uh, well um, yeah that's that's another one that I quickly realized is not true um, just to, to say it lightly that a lot of things were difficult you know um, living in a new culture living in a new environment um, and learning a new language um, yeah dealing with um, a spout of depression that I went through for the first time in my life, you know, and uh, and and learning that spiritual warfare is real. Um, you know, there were tough times, and um, but I'm I'm grateful that to have the, to have to have had the community around me and to have have had support from you all through prayers and just uh, asking me how things went and everything. Um, it really showed me that that God works through um, those those difficulties and. And one emotional outlet that I um, really used was, was singing, actually, the whole year. So um, the walls are very thin in my apartment. So instead of annoying my neighbors and my roommates, I would go up to the rooftop. This is the rooftop of our apartment. And I would just, on a tough day, just kind of go out and, and belt <coughs> worship lyrics. And uh, sometimes the people you know, below would kind of look up and be like, what is that noise? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was cool. After a while, my, my teammates be became kind of aware of that and, and they knew if I had a tough day, if, I, if things weren't going the greatest, then that's where they would find me. And it turned into a lot of awesome rooftop conversations that really built relationships through that. So that was really awesome. Um, let's go to the next one, I believe. Yes, so this final expectation uh, that I'll share that I had um, was that I'll only be there for a year. And that's it. And then I would come back home, and then I would continue on with, with the life that I had planned. And, um, I was originally thinking physical therapy, and um, you know, my plan was, all right, I'll do this for one year again, and then 
and then I'll just and then get get back into regular life. Um, but like I said, I I'm still not fluent in Spanish, and and thankfully um, there is one English speaking church in Quito. Um, five five million people of how long and 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 huge the city is in just uh, physical nature. Um, God put us in an apartment that was only 10 minutes walk from the only English church in the whole in the whole city, and I was able to go there the first Sunday. Um, and my plan was to, you know, going off the expectation that I'd be fluent in three months, I'd be like, I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go to this church, and then once I'm able to understand everything, I'll go to a Spanish church, and I'll be able to really fully experience the culture in that way through a church. But um, that first Sunday that I went here, um, just so many people rushed up to me and, and were so welcoming, and the relationships just started right off the bat to the point where um, even if I was fluent in Spanish, I don't think I would have I would have left this church. Um, it was it was just that strong of a connection, and um, I felt that connection just keep getting stronger. And towards the mid midway point of the year, I had a little bit of space in my schedule, and I I thought I, I want to start getting involved. And in whatever way I can, it just so happened at that same exact time of, of the year, um, the the pastor approached me, uh, Pastor Jeremy. He approached me and he asked if I could help lead um, the startup of uh, a young adult program that they were trying to start up after it had kind of dwindled down um, after the, because of the pandemic. Um, so um, I. I was like, yeah, let's do it. I'll, I'll, like, I would love to. I would love this. I have space in my schedule. Um, so this group of people, which we were looking at, is uh, just a just a, a, a snippet of, of the group that is the young adult group. And it's really cool. It's even though it is an, uh, an all English speaking service that they hold every Sunday. Um, actually, the, the congregation is about 50 50 50 percent Ecuadorian and 50% um, um, missionaries and, and people from other other countries. Um, so it's, it's a really awesome mixture of um, just different cultures, different perspectives on life, and then being able to come together as one um, with the same heart for the Lord and wanting to grow in that. Um, so that was a great experience for me. And um, I, at the same time, I was kind of, you know, I would go through a Sunday night and I would plan the rest of my week. And and I remember one Sunday night going through the, my plans, my schedule and everything. And I remember circling that thir those Thursday nights every night that I would, um, we, every week we would have a Thursday night meeting with the young adult group. And I remember circling that as like, this is what I'm the most excited for, for this week. And that's interesting. You know, I don't, that's not what I expected. You know, and, um, and it was the same time that I was planning on um, actually not returning to Ecuador and just coming back to the States to, to work with crew for one more year. Um, and I just, I just had, I just figured that, you know, that's not what the Lord wants me to, to be doing is to come back and work with crew in Ecuador. So I'm going to go back to the States. And, um, uh, that next Sunday I talked to that same pastor after church, Pastor Jeremy, and he knew about this decision I was, I was trying to make. And he asked me and I, I told him, you know, I think I'm just going to be going back to the States. And he, he said, well, I, I respect that. I, everything makes sense. But because I think it's worth it to say this, and because I've been praying and I've been talking to the elders, we want to offer you um, to come back and work with us next year. And, um, you know, right away hearing that, having the peace that I had in the decision that I did, just made, I was like, get away from me. Like, I was like, I don't want to hear that at all. Like, <laughs> um, you know, I already have this piece. I don't want to go through that whole process again. Um, but through the next month, I really felt that God was telling me to, to go back and, and look at this again and take another look at this because I think it was another reminder that like God telling me like you you have your plan but but just like, like wait and, and and see if my plan is the same or not you know and, and I learned that it's not you know, because I, um, I I did um, over that time see a lot of things that he was doing in my life that really pointed back to coming back to work with this church for this next year. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. And um, what what that will look like is, is a lot of um, working with this young adult group. There's a lot of mission organizations that are connected to the church just by the missionaries that go to it um, that I hope to get them to be involved with. 
and be able to experience mission work in their own cities, in their, in their own um, neighborhoods. Um, and then also, um, I hope to um, be mentored as well by Pastor Jeremy, Jeremy and be able to see kind of the life of a pastor and see if that's what the Lord is calling me to. So um, that's, that's a little bit about what next year can look like. And I have a couple more pictures of what, uh, more about the church. So this is the worship space that um, EFC, the English Fellowship Church, has. This is on, a, on an Easter morning. It's not quite as, um, as packed as it, um, at, like on a normal Sunday. But um, this was actually the same space that we used for worship nights for um, crew students um, every month. So that, that was a cool connection, and I hope to continue that connection with crew um, from the inside of, um, of the church this time so that they can continue doing that. Um, and then the next picture is we all met for Super Bowl Sunday, um, which is awesome. And this was the, exact, the same time that we were just starting up this young adult ministry at the church, and same time things were kind of picking up with steam um, with our students with crew. So me and the team, we decided, hey, why not we just combine the two worlds? Why not just like, you know, ride this momentum and see what can happen with it? So we were all just like, well, we like football. Let's see if everyone else does. And, um, and so we all met for, for Super Bowl Sunday, which was awesome. And it was a good picture for me to first, like the first time seeing the two worlds colliding in one, in, in person and some, some people getting to know each other from both of those sides. And um, that'll be another um, goal of mine is to, um, you know, knowing that all the students that I worked with last year, all the students that I, um, you know, grew in relationship with are all in the same age range as the young adult community would be. And, and allowing them to, after now that they've um, experienced a, a Christian community on campus, knowing that they won't be students forever, they won't be on campus forever, being able to give them uh, a picture of, of what that looks like in a church setting outside of that. Um, so that'll be a goal of mine as well. Um, and yeah, so um, kind of now going to, so we, we heard the expectations and the realities and a little bit in between. Um, and now these are some things that I've learned. Um, next, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, this is, so this is a, a picture of um, just one of one of the, the, the small little um, survey events that we did with the young adult group. We went to a uh, an out a, like a, a town that was about a, an hour away. We went and helped pick lima beans, and then um, for the community, um, and then we did uh, a little VBS the rest of the day for them, which is really awesome. Um, so going into things that I've learned here, um, first of all, is that my understanding is not the Lord's. Um, for when it comes to my life or just life in general and uh, that is a great thing <laughs> um, you know I, I, I can't imagine what what it would have looked like not only, not only this past year but just looking back on my whole life if I were to go through my expectations my plan for life you know how much different would things be how much how many things would I have not gone through and experienced and learned if I were relying on my own plan for my life and knowing that God knows me so much better than I know myself um, and then next one is, is that, um, yeah, this is kind of the thing that I really first hit me for real um, when I was with Josue, was that the Lord, Jesus is Lord of all. You know, he's not just Lord of my life. He's not just Lord of everyone in this building or everyone in this town, um, but he's Lord of, of the entire universe. He made it all. And um, that's just such an amazing thing to, to dwell on. And, um, and yeah, I'm so grateful to really have that, that full experience to be able to know that in my heart. Um, the next one is um, that, that he is worthy of 100% of my life. Um, and, and with this, I want to go to the, um, Acts 20 um, on the right there. Um, but I do not account my life of any va value nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And yeah, and that's that's exactly what it is. The, the, Jesus is, is worthy of not only 90% of my time, but 100% of my time. Um, my life is, 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 is of no worth to me, but it's the life that has been given to me by God's grace. That is, that, that's where the worth comes from. And, and it, my life, um, you know, what, what he has planned for me is all a gift. And, and I am so grateful to be able to see that as a gift now because it actually makes things a lot easier to, 
to, to go through and to not have these types of expectations and, and to, to go through life with, with hands much more wide open for my life um, because it's all a gift. Um, and yeah, so this, this next one is um, that ministry can take many different forms throughout life. Um, and you know, I, um, I have the opportunity, I had the opportunity to go and to spend um, a year uh, abroad and um, in a different place um, I have the opportunity, hopefully, to go back. Um, and, but I, I know that it, it just going, you don't have to go somewhere to do ministry, to have a mission-minded life. Mission-minded <coughs> lifestyles can, can take root and take form anywhere that we are in our lives, wherever we're at, in a setting, um, you know, uh, work, neighborhoods, um, even sometimes households, you know, um, it, it can be anywhere. And... And I want to go to, to Romans 10. Um, so, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And, um, you know, that last part, my feet are, are not so beautiful, but, I, you know, whatever. Um, uh, but I want to key in on that first part, um, on that first verse. You know, Paul says, he, he says, he doesn't say for, for anyone that lives in this specific region or for anyone that, that, that thinks this specific way. He says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, um, you know, that for, for me, my heart right now is... is is for, for seeing what the Lord can do through me and making sure that everyone in Ecuador can be saved and call upon the Lord. But I know right now, I'm not in Ecuador. I'm physically here. So right now, my ministry is to make sure that everyone who I come into contact with can call upon the Lord and be saved. And you know, I want to share that with you all just as encouragement going throughout daily life because that is, that is a mission for, for all of us. And that's something that's been gifted to us. Um, and the last, last, last thing that I learned is, um, you know, this gift is really a gift, and um, and God doesn't need us to do His work. He doesn't need me to go to Ecuador. You know, he, he he can do everything Himself. He has the power to do that. He doesn't He doesn't need me. But He He chooses to to invite me into His ministry. He chooses to give me this opportunity, this experience. And that's the gift of it as well. Um, and it, it, that goes for, for not only me, for, for anyone. And, um, and I just want to share that with you, is that uh, God has gifted us with, with his son who, who came and died on the cross for us. And, 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 um, and in having faith with him, by his grace, he, he gives us eternal life. And he gives us with the opportunity to be a part of his ministry and sharing that eternity with others. And um, I just want, I hope that encourages you um, to go forth and um, wherever you are um, in, this, in this town, in this world, um, to live life um, and ministry as a gift. So thank you guys for, for listening. I have um, a, a slideshow as well to, to share with you guys. I, can, it's, I think it's like 20 pictures or something. Um, like I said, I like to do photography, so there's a couple that are mixed in just of kind of the, the land of Ecuador as well. And I could, I could, you know, spend a minute or two on each one, but we'd be here for a long time. So um, I'm going to ask my dad to play some music while we, while we look at them. So, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. That's God's humor. Yeah. <laughs> like we that. hate lima beans. <laughs> Showing him is the next bit of humor. <laughs> <laughs>
all those pictures are still moving. Why don't Peter, why don't you go up and have a go prayer with you? Okay. Let's let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thank you for uh, using all of us in, in your wisdom. Uh, you choose uh, to let your glory be known through your people, your church, those who are called by you. And so, Father, we, we thank you for using Peter. We thank you, Lord, for using him uh, to serve the students in the university in Ecuador. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift that he is uh, to all of us, the encouragement that he is to all of us, for helping us to see, Lord, that it's not always our expectations, uh, but it's, it's you, Lord, working in us, surprising us every day. Um, with how you will use us. So keep us open. Bless Peter in every way. Lord, provide for everything he needs um, as he prepares to serve you once again uh, over the course of the next year. So we ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And just uh, another quick thing. I, I um, realized that I wouldn't be up here sharing with you guys having gone through this past year. Um, without all of your support. So I um, am really grateful for all the prayers, um, all of the other um, support and, and other means um, financially and, and whatnot. And uh, I just wanted to, to share um, my thankfulness with you all for that. Um, and, and I also stand up here humbly before you asking once again for that, um, for a, a, a support um, in going for this next year. Um, so this final slide um, is all the information for doing that. Um, the, the link that's above my email, um, that's actually the, the link that uh, you can go on. And, um, and it's, it almost kind of works just like a GoFundMe page. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, but um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, in, in giving support and financial means. But um, yeah. Um, prayers and support. Uh, I thank you all for continuing to do that for me and I look forward to um, talking about it more individually with you all after this. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. We rise as God's people of faith. As we rise, I ask the band to come forward too and if you could uh, get into position uh, to sing our next song. Let's Speak together, confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And we sing together our next song, I Want to Know You. <coughs>
hands together for prayer. A lot of things to pray about, for sure. Over the course of the week, we, we um, again lift up um, Pastor Adam in prayer and Melissa as they uh, move through this uh, journey together. And we also um, pray for Annette Morris. Some of you might know uh, Annette um, who had been coming to the 1030 service and then also uh, for the 6 o'clock service. Um, she connected uh, with me this week and she's having some heart issues as well. Must be a bad time for hearts, I guess, but um, she's having uh, some difficulty. So she's undergoing tests tomorrow, so we keep her in prayer as well. Carol Stano, we lift up in prayer. Les, Pastor Les Stano's wife, who is home from the hospital, um, uh, dealing with uh, uh, cancer uh, treatment. And uh, you know what? The Lord has really, uh, this is the way the Lord works. Uh, I went with her, and she's got uh, really difficult cancer that she's dealing with. And she said, you know what? I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I have a peace that passes understanding. And she said, you know what? If I hadn't fallen a couple of months ago, I just would never have known that I had cancer. So, I mean, the Lord has just changed her perspective and giving her hope. So we remember them in prayer as well. We also remember, uh, again, uh, all, the, all our friends uh, in the United Kingdom as they go through a, a real traumatic time uh, of losing uh, their, their monarch, their leader as well. And a person of faith, a person who um, really showed the love of the Lord as she served with gladness. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great blessing that you give us in Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would always, uh, in every way, uh, use us as your people. Um, that you would gift us, Lord, uh, for the work to which you called us. Uh, you would gift us for the places where you will bring us. And, Lord, for the people we'll meet and touch. And so, uh, Lord, help us in all that we do um, reflect you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Father, you give us the great commission uh, to follow your son Jesus as we live our lives, that as we are going through each day, uh, that we should make disciples, help people see Jesus so that they would follow him. Lord, bless us, empower us by your Holy Spirit to be bold in our witness and bold in our love for you, and that we would be genuine in our love for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we uh, lift up our president, our governor, our county administrator, and all who are you have, you have placed, Lord, in elected positions with wisdom and mercy, uh, that they might lead peaceable and quiet lives, and that we might remain free to share the love of Jesus to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who serve in law enforcement. We lift up Sheriff Joe McLaughlin and Deputy Heath Jenkins and all who serve both in our Sheriff's Office and all throughout our land. And be with them, Lord. Be with first responders as they serve so uh, selflessly. Doctors, nurses, EMS, firefighters. Uh, Lord, protect them and sustain them as they serve. Father, we also pray for those who serve in the military. Uh, Father, be with them as they serve. Uh, protect them, especially those who are deployed. We lift up Dylan to you, especially. And that you would be with all of them, uh, those men and women who give of themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray um, for those um, who are ill, those who we know, uh, those in our family and our friends. And we lift their names to you now um, in this place. We lift up Adam to you. We lift up to you, we lift up a net to you, we lift up Adam McLaughlin to you. Ruth. Father, all of these people, you know them. If you love them, you sent your son Jesus to die for them and to rise for them and to give them new life. And so, Father, we ask that you would bring healing, encouragement, that you would comfort, that you would give hope, that you would restore, that you would give your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, uh, you have blessed us with everything that we need in this life. And so may your spirit lead us to live our lives in thanksgiving to you as we share the hope, as we share your joy, as we share the peace that is ours in Christ. Help us, Lord. Equip us that as we're going, we can share the good news that all people would know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all to whom we pray, trusting in your goodness and in your mercy through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the gifts he gives us is the gift of his presence in this sacrament. This sacrament of love, of forgiveness that meets us on life's journey. And so we're blessed to share this meal today as he, as he told us to do. For our good, for our nourishment, and for uh, sustaining and reminding us of how much we are loved. And so hear the word of the Lord as it comes to you right now. Hold on to it, this gift that comes to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often... As we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd ask for the band folk to come forward. <coughs>
Now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We rise as God's people. And we speak the words of the prayer of thanks. Lord Jesus, your true presence has come to each of us in your word and sacrament, and we give you thanks and praise. We pray that we might go out now into the world as your people, your church, proclaiming your love. Strengthen Amen. us as your people, connected to you by your spirit, that we may grow in faith and love to share the good news of Jesus as we live in him. Amen. As God's people we proclaim, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Before we have our closing uh, benediction today, um, Adam, we are going to pray for you this week because I understand through a, a messenger who came this morning to the first service. Um, that you're having some tests this week. And uh, can we pray with you? Can we pray with you? Yes. Let's, let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with our brother Adam. And we pray, Lord, that you would give him peace on the journey. It's been uh, quite an amazing uh, time of trust and of seeing your, your glory and great power um, as you have, are bringing him healing. And so, Lord, be with him as he has some tests this week and uh, give him all that he needs to get through it. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue uh, to show forth your glory in, in and through the healing and the story, Lord, of, of Adam's trust in you and Gal's trust in you as well. Lord, shower them with your grace and mercy as healing continues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So keep the faith, my friend, as always. Right? Receive the blessing of the Lord today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 We sing together the first stanza of our closing song. So Phil Giussani, his birthday. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phil. Happy birthday to you. May Jesus bless you. May Jesus bless you. May Jesus bless you. Love and serve the Lord, that all may know the love of Jesus. Thanks be to God.